Hi everyone, my name is Ross Barbera. I'm a painter. I build my paintings using freehand airbrush painting techniques. In the following video presentation, I'll demonstrate my method of freehand airbrush painting. The painting that you see behind me, it's acrylic on canvas and painted exclusively with the airbrush. The very first step in developing a painting is to establish some kind of foundation that you can work into, usually a drawing. For my large canvases, I start right off with acrylic paint and I draw in my subject with an airbrush using acrylic paint. But for the smaller works, I often begin the smaller works on paper, something that could be 22 by 30 or, or smaller, like the demonstration that I'm about to do. I often begin my watercolors with a pencil sketch or a light watercolor sketch. And for today's demonstration, I'll start with a pencil sketch. I mounted a piece of 300 pound Archer's cold press watercolor paper onto a drawing board. I taped it down and gessoed lightly over the tape. This way it's not affected by the paint when I start spraying the paint to build the image. I like to keep my drawing as clean as possible, so as I build in corrections, I'll be using my kneaded eraser to get rid of some preliminary lines. I've increased the video speed for the drawing part of the airbrush demonstration. The only type of eraser I will use on watercolor paper is a kneaded eraser. It's very gentle. It doesn't damage the surface. Anything else is destructive. And what I usually do if I lay in a drawer is I erase most of it. Because these are my preliminary lines. I want to get rid of them. But I use them to correct. When you're drawing, you don't want to get rid of your preliminary lines completely because they are guidelines now. I started out with a blank paper. I didn't know where anything was going. I had to make marks to establish something. Now I could use those marks to evaluate against my subject and continue to make corrections and bring it closer to my subject. Okay, I think I have all I, I need. What I'm going to do is clean it up a little bit more. Really reestablish, get all the gray areas out of there, reestablish the line of the paper, and we'll begin the demonstration. Before I begin to paint, I would like to introduce you to some of the paints and the airbrush and other materials that I'll be using throughout the demonstration. This is an Iwata airbrush. It's an HP TR2, in case you want to look it up. It's a trigger action airbrush, and that makes it very comfortable to paint with. And the Iwater airbrush can either be set up for left hand, which it is right now, but I'm right handed, so I need to change it. All you do is pull out that little plug, put it there, and insert the color cup into the right side of the airbrush. Now it's ready to go. And the reason why you would do that is because if you're right-handed like me and you're painting, you don't want to block your field of vision by having a cup on the left side. And the same thing goes for your left hand. If you're left-handed, your field of vision is towards the right, you don't want to block your view with a color cup, so you want it on the left side. The airbrush needs to be attached to a compressor. This is an Iwata airbrush hose that leads to my compressor, and I attached a quick release on the end of the hose so I don't have to unscrew the airbrush to remove it. I just 
plug it in. It makes switching between airbrushes really easy. See, that's all you do. What's nice about the iWater airbrush is they designed an air filter that attaches to the bottom of the airbrush itself. Of course, I have an air filter on the outlet of my air compressor, but this is a nice little additional secondary backup filter. There's 20 pounds of pressure in the line right now. What's really nice about the air filter is it provides a comfortable handle to hold on to while you're painting. I have to say this is the most comfortable airbrush I've ever painted with. And what's the difference between this and a more traditional type of an airbrush? This is my custom Micron, capable of producing extraordinarily fine lines. And the trigger mechanism on this one is on top. So you press it down with your index finger. The color cup is at the top. I could work out a canvas with this color cup. It's no, no problem being located there. But I believe it's designed specifically for drafting table work. And this is the type of airbrush I used to have my students get when I, I taught um, airbrush painting. But now with the availability of this, I definitely would recommend this for canvas painting. These are the paints that I use. I stick with golden acrylics and I use their high flow acrylics and fluid acrylics. When I'm painting with an airbrush, I always thin down both the high flow and the fluid with 50% medium. For the high flow, I use high flow medium. For the fluid, I use airbrush medium. Now that might sound confusing. So what happens when you intermix your colors? The high flow can be used for either high flow or fluid acrylics. So when I know that I've mixed paint with high flow, or even if I'm not sure, I just stick with my high flow medium. It's a good universal medium for both. And titanium white is a color that I go through huge quantities of titanium white. So I always buy the bigger jar. I premix my colors in advance and I store the premixed colors in these little jars, these little plastic squeeze bottle jars. And every time I premix a color, I add a tiny steel ball to the, the color so it facilitates homogenizing the color, stirring it up before you use it. Throughout the entire painting process, you'll be needing to clean the delicate tip of your airbrush because Paint accumulates on the very fine needle. I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but this very fine stainless steel needle that comes out there. And paint, since it's acrylic, will accumulate on that and eventually degrade the quality of your spray. So cleaning is ongoing throughout the entire painting process. And this is what I do. I put cleaning fluid. This is my homemade cleaning fluid. I put it into this Pentel brush. See, I could squeeze it and dispense a little fluid. And as the paint builds up, I just gently clean the tip. I've taken off the air cap. See the exposed needle. With the Eyewater airbrush, you can paint with the air cap off. And what does that do? It allows you to get very close to the surface of your canvas or paper and get a very sharp line. The reason for the air cap is to protect that needle. What if you're painting and you get super close to the surface of the canvas and actually hit the canvas, and I've done that many times? Well, you just damage the needle. It's wise to keep the air cap on. I do remove it to get that tight detail. You'll see me do this in the demonstration. But when I'm doing more general spraying and not getting them really tight, I keep the cap on. We have our paints, we have our airbrush, the air hose, a cleaning device that I rigged, squeeze bottles for dispensing paint, the steel ball, to lay in the drawing on paper, and this is only when I work in watercolor or small pieces on paper for airbrush, I use the technical pen and I draw it in with that. When I paint on canvas, I start directly with my acrylics. I don't use any different kind of medium to lay in a drawing. The cleaning solution that I use is based on a fairly popular recipe that you can find if you Google it. It's one part filtered water, one part 91% isopropyl alcohol, one part windshield washer fluid, 
Why use this as opposed to buying this? This is extremely expensive, and although I do buy it for heavy cleaning every so often, this is the stuff I use on a daily basis, and I, I'm able to mix it by the gallon, and it's very inexpensive. And since you're using an airbrush and you're spraying paint, make sure you're always wearing an N95 face mask. I'm just about ready to start painting, but I'd like to add that topics like paint mixing and keeping the airbrush clean, I'll discuss these topics as we progress through the demonstration. First thing I'll do is analyze my subject and see what is the most dominant color. Then I mix that color and I begin to work the color in throughout the entire painting. I carry the color, the mixed color, not only in the object that inspired me to mix that color, but I discover where it could go throughout the surface of the painting and I work it in. I'll start out with a mixture of cobalt blue and quinacridone magenta. I'll use that mixture to create this mauve-like color that I also see hints of it throughout. Put a little in the cup. Now into the cobalt blue, I will add quinacridone magenta. Since I'm gonna use an airbrush, I use 50% airbrush medium to dilute the paint. And I like to use the airbrush medium straight. I don't usually add water to the mixture of paint and medium. If I do, a very small amount of distilled water. You can see how it's close to what's in the photo. After I mix the paint to put it in a jar, I always drop in one of these mixing balls, stainless steel balls in there. Close it down. Stir it up. With the light sketch in place, the first thing I do is I mix the appropriate color and I begin to work it throughout the entire painting. And I think of it as a drawing process. I not only reinforce the sketch, but I start to add in more detail as I see it. So, let's begin. Notice I support the airbrush with two hands. My photo was to my left, the photo that I took of the spring crocus a few weeks ago. I'm painting with a color that's in my brush that's not quite what's in the subject. But I find by building into the image with layers of paint, I can gradually adjust the colors to where I need them to wind up. And by approaching it that way is a gradual evolution of colors that result in something that looks like my subject, I wind up with a rich surface of all kinds of subtle color variations. I'm carefully studying patterns on the pedal surface and suggesting these patterns by modulating value transitions from light to dark. The color is a mixture of cornacridone magenta and cobalt blue. Then I tint it down with titanium white. And I find titanium white is an extremely important color to use in airbrush painting because it adds an opacity to the colors. That really helps with building up color areas. I'm a studio painter that relies on my photography to develop my paintings. So I always have my photograph to the left of me and I'm referring to it constantly. And it's not so much that I'm copying what's there. I feel like I'm paraphrasing what's there, but the photograph provides me with all types of insight into the colors that I want to mix and I see all kinds of subtleties going on that I gradually work into the painted image.
cleaning my airbrush tip. A little paint built up on that needle. I think we talked about this earlier on. There we go. You can barely see it. But because we're spraying paint, the acrylic, and it's acrylic, it dries on the, the needle eventually. And it's important to get it off. It'll degrade the quality of the spray if you leave it on and eventually it'll simply stop spraying. So important to have a test piece of paper next to you as you paint. So I think of my paintings as value studies of the surface of the, uh, the image and the subject. And I work in the transitions that I see from light to dark. And of course, why? Because they establish form. I've jumped directly into the painting process without explaining the mechanics of basic airbrush painting. I do plan to get down to the basics and periodically during the demonstration, I'll show you some basic exercises that help develop skill. As you watch me mix my colors, you'll notice that I often refer to the same colors for color mixing. The reason for this is because I use a limited color palette and mix most of my secondary and tertiary colors rather than purchase pre-mixed colors. It's really nice about the airbrush is the way you could introduce gradual transitions from light to dark. If you get into airbrush painting, please wear your mask. This is what I have on right now. An N95, and that's, that's adequate enough. Also, I'm not doing any heavy spraying. This is very light spraying of paint. And most of my paintings, even my six foot canvases, I approach it the same way. So minimal amounts of particulates are floating around, but you need to wear the mask. Notice that as I spray, I'm modulating the color from dark to light and fade out. I first start applying the paint with the airbrush relatively close to the surface of the paper. Then I pull the airbrush back as I fade out. I'm also gradually releasing pressure on the trigger, allowing the trigger to move forward. I'll show you how the trigger action directly affects the needle a little later on in the video. When you pull back on the trigger, the needle is retracted from the air blast nozzle that is located at the tip of the airbrush. This increases the opening where the paint exits from the airbrush and therefore increases the volume of paint coming out of the airbrush. It doesn't matter whether I'm working on a tiny piece or a six foot canvas. I mix that singular color, the most common denominator color I see, and I work it throughout the surface, just like you see me doing. The closer I bring my airbrush to the surface, the stronger the, the color, the sharper the line, and the further I pull it away from the surface. See that? the more subtle and fainter the line. That's the beauty of the airbrush painting. If you want a nice sharp line, bring your airbrush in tight. Hold it as perpendicular to the surface as possible. And if you want to fade that line out, it just back up. <laughs> 